Hey there everybody, it's the Nasty One here again, and welcome back to another episode of the Hot Corners Dynasty, here in franchise mode of Super Mega Baseball 3. Last time out, we managed to eke out a win in the bottom of the ninth after blowing a three-run lead, 8-7 over the winless Herbisaurs, keeping us undefeated on the season. Today will be Game 5 against the Sandcats, the first inter-expansion draft matchup for our Hawk Corners here in the series. Unfortunately, we will still be without Bo Belter. He is going to be out for one more game at least. So, hopefully he'll be back for the sixth game, but we won't know until that such time passes. Just a quick overview of stat changes between the last game and now. Nora Holmes got a new pair of contacts, improving her contact to the max level at 99. Um, Grump Everbright lost the one junk we gave him last episode he got a little overconfident and Sterling Jones's pitches got a little bit sloppier after the blown save down to a 54 accuracy rating. McDonald's doesn't count because he's a free agent. Oh. Anyway, no need to make a move yet, although I think if Jones blows another save, I might have to consider signing a closer if there is one in the free agent market that I like. And judging by this, Peralta is the only closer in the free agent market he's 23 years old and right now he wants eight and a half mil how does that compare to jones it's actually 2.6 million dollars more so if his price comes down enough i could consider it or we could do something else and sign a starter have four starters and four relievers with rachel rhubarb the rookie being placed in the bullpen and not have a designated closer that is also a possibility because, let's see, of the guys that I've highlighted, Shave was at 17 mil, so that could be a while. Faith Blaze, Faith Blaze is down to 13.7, but she's a starter reliever. Uh, Adon Jock, he's down to 10.2. Messiah Presidente is down to 7.9 mil, and McFarlane's down to 6.9, so... It's conceivable. I mean, Geist Cherry and Carno Cruz are both already low enough that I could consider them. So... We'll keep that thought in the back of our brains here. Uh, looking at player development screen, there isn't anything I want to buy right now. I'm not going to buy this bullpen session for a guy who's probably going to retire anyway. Plus, what he really needs help with is his accuracy, and that's not one of the options to improve. And we don't have enough money to do anything else, but uh, Kaiser's opportunity will probably be gone as well next game. So we'll have two new options to choose from. So we're just going to stand pat here and jump into the fifth game here. Uh, let's see... Sox is still going to be in right because Belter is still hurt. Sportswood, he's down to regular, but Burko's doing really well, so I think we'll leave Burko in unless he starts making a lot of errors. Randy Man, at, with by default, can remain being the DH. And there's another righty on the hill, so I'm confident leaving Stagcleef in. Although Holmes isn't hitting as well, so let's move Burko up one in the roster. Move him up to six, yeah. That'll be the only change we make, I think. Because I don't really... I mean, the other option to take Holmes out would be to move Randy Mann to short. Because even though that's his backup position, I think. Pardon me. And have someone else DH. Which wouldn't be... It wouldn't, it wouldn't be Sportswood because he's still tense. But that I think that would be DeGrande. But I don't want both my catchers being tired. So it just doesn't sound like a good idea. All right, so here we go. Sand Cats versus Hot Corners. Two expansion teams chasing off here. Uh, looks like they got their starting lineup ready. Let's do it. Here is Knox Oxen Soxen. He's a catcher, and he will be leading off today, which is it's very rare to see a catcher with that kind of speed in this game. That's, that's something you don't normally see. Change up below the knees. Ball one from Cooper as the game is underway here. Second pitch grounded to first. Burko's going to feel that easily. Make the play himself for the first out. Bring up Marsha Brown, the right fielder. First pitch from Cooper's on the outside corner, 0-1. Outside, 1-1. Outside. One -on -one. outside. Two and one now. That's back to the middle. What a hot field by Cooper. She's going to make the play for the second out. 
Now Dolph Steak, the center fielder, is playing left field. He actually is left fielder, but he's playing center field today. Or he might be a center fielder, but he's playing left field, I think. So he is in a backup position. Slider swung through at strike three, stake down on strikes, and it's a 1 2 3 inning for Cooper to start the game. Bottom one we go with Sox, James, and Alive will face Kerwin Arches, the former, I believe, number four pitcher for the Sirloins. Kerwin Arches has moved over to be the ace for the Sandcats. So let's see how we do. That's a strike right down the middle, 0 and 1. Another strike going to it. Wasn't my pitch. Two heaters. Let's see what he goes with. Well, he blew that by me. Oh, strike three. Socks down, swinging, doesn't break the bat. Mm. Arches has his first K. His Jones is up now. Or James is up. Looks at one on the outside corner, 0 1. That's dribbled softly to the right side, fielded by Duffers. He'll make the play for the second out. Going to bring up Stan Alive. Hit his first career home run last game and also drove in three runs. Ball outside, 1 0. That's fouled off. A little late on that pitch. One and one. Arch is set. Here's the delivery. Fouled back. Alive. Staying alive. One and two now as the tough out activates. Fourth pitch is fouled off to the right side. Staying alive. Making Arches work. Chase that one high. Grounded the first. Bentley will backhand and take it to the bag himself for the third out. Nothing doing for either side in the first. To the second. It'll be four, five, and six up. Here is Hercules Bentley, drafted from the Nemesis in this series. So he's starting at first base. First pitch is a heater on the inside corner, 0-1. Cutter on the inside corner, 0-2 now. Changeup swung through it, strike three on the inside corner. He is down on strikes for the first out. i bring up Gia Axelson. She was drafted from the Saw Teeth, I believe. Playing center field today, first pitch called a strike. 0-1. Slider on the outside corner. Ripped the short. Holmes backhands in the hole and fires. Two outs. And that'll bring up Super Samson. He's new to the series. He's the center fielder today. I should. See, I wish I could see their lineup in the pause menu. That'd be lovely. First pitch on the inside corner. 0-1. Egypt called a strike on the inside corner again. 0-2. Cutter dribbled foul. Sampson stays alive. Slider dribbled to short. Holmes charging. Fields and fires. Gets the speedy Sampson for another 1-2-3 inning. Nothing doing for them in the second. Bottom two we go. 4, 5, and 60 up for the hot corners. Let's see if they have any better luck. Jeb jumps leading off the young second baseman. Bat 450 on the season here. First pitch way inside. Almost cracked him in the noggin. 1-0. Fastball outside. 2-0 the count. Slider up the knees, two and one. That's fouled off by Jumps. He's got to protect now, two and two. That's driven deep to right center field. That's going to be a tough play. Samson going over to the gap. He looks up. It's gone. Jeff Jumps hits his second home run of the season as he gives the Hawk Corners a one nothing lead there as it just eked into the right center seats. Now to bring up Bobby Bash with no outs and nobody on. Dash has four home runs on the season already. Looking for number five here. Ball inside, 1-0. Oh. Ball high, 2-0. Oh. Ball high, 3-0 oh the count now. Arches gets one on the outside corner, 3-1. And, and that ball is high. It's a five-pitch walk for Bash. He's the most walked batter in the lineup. As he trots on down to first now. Runner on with one out for Stu Burko. Burko looks at one high at the letter, above the letters, 1-0. That was a heater. That heater catches the inside corner, 1-1 one one the count now. That high pitch is ripped into center. That's going to drop in for a base hit. Bash will round second, make Samson throw, but he will retreat to second base. So runners, two runners on for Nora Holmes now, the only batter in the lineup feeling tense at the moment. Pressure's up to notch number two here. As Arches is set, first pitch inside. That slider did not break in as he thought, 1-0. That heater's going to be ripped back up the middle. That's going to be a base hit. Samson fields and fires back in to hold Bash to third as the bases now load up. Pressure up to two notches still as Randy Mann is up. The DH today, second consecutive start. Ball outside, 1-0. 
That's going to be skied to dead shallow center. Samson in. Probably not going to tag. I'll make him throw, but other than that, we're not running. It's way too shallow. One out now. Base is still loaded for Stagcleave, the lowest rated hitter in the lineup today. Stagcleave hits that into the right center gap. That's going to get down for a base hit. Good hitting from Stagcleave as two runs will come in to score on the RBI single. Nora Holmes advances to third. Runners at the corners now with one out as the Hot Corners now take a 3 0 lead. Sox steps out as we look at the runners here. Holmes and Stagcleave both do not have any speed, so if Sox wants to drive them in, he's got to get it in the gap. That first pitch is going to sky down the left field line sharply. That will drop in front of Stake, who gets it back in quickly as Run scores on the play. 4 0 Hot Corners now as they're starting to break it open bit by bit. Geronimo James up now with two runners on. Only one out still. Pitches outside that's ripped at center. That will hang up, though, as Samson runs under it for the second out. That had some good pop to it, but just not in the right spot. Now it'll bring up Stan Alive. 0 for 1 today with a ground out. Ball low, 1 and 0. Second pitch ripped down the right field line. That's going to go into the corner. It will get by Axelson out there in right. Or that's Brown. She will field it and get it back in, but a run does score on the double by Alive. 5 nothing. Hot Corners is now two runners are in scoring position for Jeb Jumps, who led off the inning with the home run as the lineup has batted around here as Arches is looking flustered. First pitch ripped up the middle. That's going to drop right in front of Sampson's sliding attempt as the second run's going to try and score. It will not, but the one run does score on the play, making it a 6 nothing game on the RBI single by Jumps. 7-8-9 do up here for the Sandcats as they look to bounce back after a seven-hit inning leads to six runs. Here is Rodney Park. He was the starting shortstop of the Moonstars taken in for in the expansion draft by the Sandcats as they look at one high, 1-0. One oh. Change up on the inside corner, 1-1. One one. Slider inside, 2-1. and one. Change up call to strike on the high inside corner, 2-2. Two and two. Cutter grounded foul just late on that was Park. Stays alive. Peter popped up the first base side. Burko over. Makes the catch. One out. Now to bring up Chip Duffers now, the second baseman. He is new to the series. First pitch called a strike on the inside corner. 0-1. Change up outside on the corner. 0-2 to count now. Two seamer in the dirt, one and two. Good eye by Duffers. Cutter ripped to first. Burko there to field it. Taps the bag himself. Two outs now. Now to bring up Kaw Kerry Kawaguchi, who has no hits on the season. She is new to the series. Looking for her first career hit. That first pitch is driven deep out the left field, and that will be gone. Just like that, you say something about it, it comes true. Kara Kawaguchi records her first career Super Mega Baseball League hit and home run in the same swing on the first pitch of the at-bat as it's a solo homer. 6-1 is now the score as the Sandcats start clawing their way back. Back to the top of the order here with Oxen Soxen up now. First pitch cutter below the knees, 1-0. Eater called a strike on the outside corner, 1-1. Change up outside. Call to strike. One and two. Slider skied to first. Burko doesn't have to move. Makes the catch for the third out. Cooper gives up her first hit and her first run on the solo shot to Kawaguchi. But other than that, Hot Corners hold a 6-1 lead. Now Bobby Bash up. No official at bat so far in the game as he drew a five-pitch walk his first time up. Arch's first delivery is at the letters. Called a strike. 0-1. Oh Ball inside. 1-1 one one the count. That's turned on and ripped foul by Bash. 1-2 the count now as Arches is ahead in the count. Next pitch is driven out to right center field. This is Sampson going back at the track, at the wall. Leaps, it's gone. Off the batter's eye in center field. Bobby Bash goes yard here. It's his fifth of the season, time for the team leading home runs as he now puts them back up by six. It's seven to one hot corners in the third. Here's Stu Burko. First pitch from Arches is high as he's definitely rattled here. Second pitch is driven out the left center field. Sampson going over to the warning track, calling for it now. Comes in a step, makes the catch, one out. That'll bring up Nora Holmes. One for one, had a single back in the second inning. 
That's ripped up the middle. That's going to be a first pitch base hit for Holmes as she gets on with one out now. And that'll bring up Brandy Mann, the second baseman, playing DH today, feeling a little tense. That's ripped hard on the ground to short. Park flips the second one on to first. It's a double play, and the inning is over for the Hot Corners, but they do get the one run back on a solo shot by Bash. 7-1, your score to the fourth. Leading off is right fielder Marsha Brown, feeling a little tense now. First pitch is ripped into left field. A live slides. It's off his glove, and that'll be a base hit for Brown as the ball throw will hold her to adjust a single. That'll bring up Dolph Stake playing left field today. Traditionally a center fielder. Struck out his first time up. First pitch ball below the knees, 1-0. Peter called a strike on the outside corner, 1-1. Cutter inside, 2-1. Change up below the knees. Three and one the count now as Stake is showing a good eye here. Heater called a strike. Full count. Slider ripped to left. Leaping his bash to make the play. What athleticism from the 35-year-old veteran. That'll bring up Hercules Bentley, the first baseman. Had a single to his credit, I believe. So Actually, I think he grounded out. First pitch is called a strike on the inside corner. 0-1. All inside. 1-1 one one the count now. Bentley skies the third pitch cutter to shallow right, jumps on the grass, comes in a step on the back end of the diamond, dirt, makes the catch for the second out. Going to bring up Axelson playing the DH role today. Mistakenly said she wasn't left, my bad. First pitch called a ball on the outside corner, 0-1, 1-0, whatever. Change up on the inside corner, 1-1 the count now. Cutter right down the middle, called a strike again, 1-2. and two. Change up, sky to right. Socks in a few steps, calls for it, makes the catch for the third out. Nothing doing for the Sandcats, so they do manage to get their second hit. Other than that, nothing much. Bottom four we go. Stag Cleave leading off here for the hot corners. One for one today, two RBIs on the base hit earlier today. His first two of the season. First pitch is going to be skied out to right field. It was a good pitch, couldn't let that go. It's foul, out of play. Owen won the count. First pitch inside, ball one. Third pitch ripped up the middle. Another base hit for Stagcleaf, who's all of a sudden learning how to hit the ball again. Something he rarely did back in Super Mega Baseball 2. Seymour Sox up now with a runner at first. Granted, he's our slowest runner. Probably the slowest runner in the game, too. First pitch is high for ball one. I think his speed's like, what, a one? Maybe a zero? Second pitch hit on the ground to second on a hop. Flips to second one on to first. Double play. It's a 4-6-3, and that base hit is quickly erased. Geronimo James up with two outs and nobody on now. Archer's getting back into a little bit of a groove as he gets one on the inside corner. Whoa, and one. Heater is high. One and one the count now. Third pitch is ripped out to the right center gap. No one's going to catch that one as that's going to hop all the way to the wall there. On a hop. Fielded by Samson. He's going to get it back in as James is digging for three. Cut off by Duffers. The throw in is not in time. It's a two out triple for Geronimo James as that puts a runner in scoring position for Stan Alive. Had a double his last time up. And he also scored a run. That first pitch is ripped down the left field line. That's going to get into the corner. And that is a fair ball. Now, fielded badly there by Stake as he finally gets it in. But it's another double for Alive as a run scores. 8-1. Now the tally. Here is Jeb Jumps now. Has a home run today. Ball inside. 1-1. One 1-0. And one. One and oh, sorry. Here's the second pitch from Arches as he's set. Slider stays outside, 2-0. Peter High, 3-0 the count. He's all of a sudden lost the zone again. Rattled nature. That's going to be called a strike at the letters, 3-1. Fifth pitch, skied left field. This is a tough play. Stake going back to the warning track. He's at the wall. He's calling for it. Can he catch it? No, it is just out of his reach as he leaps at the wall and misses it. Jumps hits his second home run of the game as that two-run shot makes it a 9-1 scoreline. That's his third homer of the season. Now Bobby Bash up one for one as a walk, a solo home run. What is he going to do here? First pitch called a strike on the high inside corner, 0-1. Ball inside as that heater misses. Ripped up the middle, Park there to leap and make the catch as that ends the inning, but the hot corners push across three more and make it 10-1. Top five we go. Sampson the lead off here, the young center fielder batting 091 on the season. 
First pitch called a ball below the knees. 1-0. Hutter called a strike this time at the knees. He found it that time. Cooper throws her third pitch. It's popped up. Shallow center. Jumps there. Makes the catch. One out. Now Rodney Park up. First pitch is called a strike on the inside corner. 0-1. All low, one and one. Nope. Hutter is high, two and one. See. Heater called a strike, two and two the count now to Park. Full we'll count now. See. Cutter below the knees, ball four as she lost them. Cooper gives up the walk as Park jogs down to first. Now one out, one on for Chip base. Duffers. Park has a bad jump straight, so he doesn't steal generally. Strike at the letters, 0 1. Slider outside, ball one. Ball inside, 2 and 1 the count now. Ball inside again, 3 and 1 now. Change up, call to strike the knees, full count. Heater blown by him, but it's a walk just low, says the umpire. Back-to-back -back walks now for the Sand Cats. Gets two on for Kawaguchi, who recorded her first hit last time up, which was a homer. First pitch ripped to left. Alive coming in, makes the catch for the second out, though, as both runners will have to retreat. That'll bring up Knox Oxen Sox. What can he do? Heater called to strike the knees, 0-1. Slider called a strike at the knees on the outside corner. 0-2 now. Change up. Grounded to short. Holmes there to field. Fires to first, and that's the third out as Cooper gets out of a jam of her own creation. She gives up two walks, but no hits in the inning. Bottom five we go. 10-1 your score. Burko leading off here against Arches, whose ERA has jumped over nine, almost to 10. Ripped on the first pitch down the left field line, past the diving Kawaguchi. It'll be a base hit for Burko. State gets it in quickly to hold him there. And now Nora Holmes up. Arch is set, delivers. Call the strike of the letters, 0 1. Ball high, 1 1. Ball outside, 2 1 the count now. I believe that was a little high as well. Third or fourth pitch, ripped the right field over the leaping second baseman. Brown there to field it as the runner will retreat to second. Two runners on now and nobody out for Randy Mann. Go for two today. That's ripped to right center field. That's going to get all the way to the wall. No one's going to catch it. Rounding third is going to be Burko. He's going to score easily. Holmes rounds third as Mann stops at second with a double. Two runs. Both runners score. It's two RBIs on the play. 12-1 now your score for the hot corners. They've broken it open here. Lars Stagcleaf up now. Two for two. Two singles, two RBIs. Let's see if he make it three for three. First pitch ripped to the right side. Past the diving Duffers. Rounding third and retreating to third will be the eight runner. Randy Mann. Rough throw in. We'll hold him there. Seymour Sox up now, one for three today with a single and an RBI. First pitch is outside for ball one. First pitch, second pitch, sky to left. Easy play for stake in the gap, makes the catch for the first out. Runner will tag from third, man coming in, throw in, not in time. Sack fly there for Seymour Sox, this is now 13 to one hot corners. That'll bring up Geronimo James. First pitch is way inside, ball one. Ball inside again, 2-0, getting a little closer to the plate this time. Third pitch is going to be ripped right to the second baseman, Duffers, who will double off Stagcleaf at first. And that will end the inning, but three more runs come across on in the inning, and it's 13-1. Top six we go, Marsha Brown leading off against Cooper. First pitch has caught a strike on the outside corner, 0-1. Slider dribbled in front of the plate, but stays foul, 0-2. Peter grounded up the middle as it breaks the bat. Jumps there to field. Fires to first. Gets the out as they had to dodge the shrapnel. Golf stake up now. Nobody on. Cutter high. 1-0. Peter outside. 2-0 the count now. Changeup swung through it. 2-1. 
Slider fouled off. Two and two count now. Heater popped up on the left side. Holmes going out for it. She'll get there for the second out. Now to bring up Hercules Bentley. 0 for 2 today. Batting under 160 on the season. First pitch called a strike on the outside corner. 0 and 1. Slider called a strike at the letters. 0 and 2 the count now. Cooper ahead. Third pitch grounded to third. Bash fields it easily. Fires the first. And that's a 3 up, 3 down inning for Cooper. Bottom six we go. 13 to 1 is your score. Heart of the order do up to face Arches here in the sixth to stand alive will lead off. As instead of Arches facing them, it will be Maverick McMahon, formerly of the... F was he the Freebooters or the Moose? I think he was the Freebooters. Yeah, Maverick McMahon, one of the greatest, great relievers in the game, is coming in to pitch. Here is stand alive. First pitch high, 1-0. Heater was not even close. Second pitch, ripped to the right field. It's off the jumping Bentley's glove as it'll be a, a single for... Alive. Bentley had a great effort there, but it just bounced off the top of this glove. Jeb jumps up now. First pitch outside, ball one. Strike at the knees on the slider, one and one. Third pitch ripped up the middle, past the diving shortstop park. It'll get through for another single. Samson's throw will hold Alive to second base. Two on and nobody out to start. Bobby Bash up now, one for two. Solo home run and a walk on his line score. First pick from the man is going to be line soft for the second on the hop. Be an easy double play as the runner advances to third. Burko up now. Two on, one on, nobody out. One on, two outs. First pitch from McMahon is high, ball one. That heater never even threatened the zone. Second pitch ripped up the middle. Oh, that's going to hit McMahon right in the chest. No one's going to be able to recover in time. It's going to be an infield single, but oh, my Lord. I hope that man is okay. Nora Holmes up now. Three for three today. Three singles. McMahon will exit after taking that to the face. Oh, wee. Gasser Morris is new to the series. He will be coming in to relieve. Let's see what the injury is. Extreme pain. Yeah, he took that to the face, folks. He's going to be out for a long time. Four games at least, possibly five. Oh, oh, that, oh, that makes, that's, oh, God. That makes me think of the Alex Cobb injury a few seasons ago when he took that liner off the head. Oh, anyway, uh, Gasser Morris is a left-handed specialist. He drops their batter's power and contact when he's facing a lefty. Other than that, pretty ordinary. First pitch at 100 miles an hour on the inside corner for a strike. 0-1. Second break. pitch is outside, ball one. Third pitch hit out the right. It'll be an easy play for Brown to make, and that'll end the inning. One run comes across on the injury to McMahon as the hot corners extend their lead, 14-1. Top seven we go. Axelson leading off here against Cooper. Change up ripped up the middle. Diving is Holmes. It's just past her into center field. That'll be a base hit. Axelson on to start the inning. Good effort from home, but just out of her reach. Now Samson up, 0 for 2 today, batting under 100 now. He's at 083. First pitch, sky to center. James coming over to his left, and he slides past it, and it'll get almost all the way to the wall as the runner did not had to tag back up because they thought the out was going to be made as it only be just a double for Samson, the speedster. Second and third down with nobody out for Rodney Park. 0 for 1 today, drew a walk last time up. Change up call to strike, 0 and 1. Heater called a strike 0-2 now. Slider grounded to the left side. Holmes coming in, fields it, fires to first. That will get the out, but the run does score on the RBI ground out. 14-2, your score. Now Chip Duffers up. First pitch to Duffers is called a strike at the knees, 0-1. Change up, popped into foul territory. Bash going over towards the first third base dugout. Leaps, almost leaps at the stands, but it's out of reach. 0-2, your count. Change up, drowned the third. Bash will field and fire on to first to record the second out, but the run does score on another RBI ground out, 14 to three. Now Kawaguchi up. First pitch to her is called a strike at the letters, 0-1. Slider up the middle, base hit for Kawaguchi, her second of the day. Throw in from James, we'll keep her honest at first. That'll flip the lineup over for Oxen Soxen, 0 for three. 
First pitch, grounded to the right side. Jumps, dives. It's off his glove, and that's going to ricochet into foul territory as Kawaguchi will make it to third easily on the play thanks to her speed. Runners at the corners now, and I believe Jumps is hurt on the play. Oh, Oxen Socks is hurt. He stubbed his toe. He stubbed his toe on the bag, folks. He's hurt. It's a minor injury, though, so he'll be keep playing here. Marsha Brown up. First pitch popped up behind the plate. Stag Cleep going over to the third base dugout, but it's going to get out of reach. 0-1. Heater grounded back to the mound, past Cooper. Holmes comes in, bare hands, fires. It's an infield single for Brown as the run scores, 14 to four now. Now Dolph stake up, two on, two outs. First pitch low the knees, oh, one and oh. Heater called a strike at the top corner of the zone, one and one. Cutter inside, one and two, I'm two and one, sorry. Heater grounded the short. Holmes in the hole. It misses it. It'll go through. Alive fields. Run around third. Trying to score. Throw in. Not in time. Way off the corner mark as well. It's 14 to 5. As that's going to do it for Cooper. Mazo Hayes will be coming in the righty to face Bentley. First pitch ripped into center. James over to his left. Makes the play for the third out. Four runs do score though for the Sandcats. As it's now 14 to 5. Bottom seven we are. Randy Mann leading off one for three with a double and two RBIs. And the specialist comes into effect for Morris as the first pitch is outside. One and oh on the changeup. Swung through, one and one. Inside, two and one. He wanted it. That slider was just there. Swung through it, two and two now. Man down. Third, fifth pitch ripped to right field. That's a nice hit. Going back as Brown at the wall, leaps, it's gone! Randy Mann has his first homer of the season as he makes it a 15-5 game. What a swing from the veteran middle infielder. Now up Lars Stadkleef, 3-3 three for three today, three singles, two RBIs to his name. Lars looks at one below the dirt, or below the knees, I'm sorry, 1-0 oh, in the dirt. First pitch, second pitch is at the letters, 1-1. One one. That pitch is just on the outside corner, 2-1. One and two. Fourth pitch, line to right. Over the leaping second baseman. Another hit for Stagcleef. Four for four. Four base hits. For Stagcleef, obviously his best output so far this season. Runner at first now with uh, no outs for Sox. First pitch, line softly to left center field. That's a tough play. No one's going to get there. State gets it back in, though. Stagcleef retreats to second. It's a hit for Sox. Two on and one out now for James. One for four today with a single. Ball outside, ball inside, 1-0 and as the specialist takes effect. Second pitch, line to left center field. That's going to get down for another base hit. Rounding third to Stagcleef. He will come in to score easily as it's 16-5. to RBI for James. Now a live up. Two on, nobody out still. Now Morris is working himself into a jam. First pitch, rip the right center field. That's going back at the warning track. At the wall, looking up is Brown. It is gone in the right center seats. Another home run for Stan Alive, his second in as many games as that three-run bomb makes it a 19-5 score line for the Hot Corners. Now Jeb jumps up, four for four, two homers, two singles, four RBIs. Specialist activated, though, so that kind of cancels out his mojo, but ball outside, 1-0. Ball outside again, 2-0. Morris can't find the zone. Ball three, 3-0. Three that was not, none of these are even close to the zone. Fourth one is going to be on the outside corner. 0 and one, 3 and 1 now. Swung through by jumps. Full count. Six pitch. Ripped to first, but Bentley dives to make the play. What an effort out there. Especially in a shellacking such as this. Bash up now with one out, no one on. First pitch ripped to the left side. That's going to get through for a base hit. No one was going to dive for that one. Bash is on now with another single. Now to bring up Burko. Three for four as the power versus lefty activates, but we're going to the bullpen, folks. Gemma Iago from the B-Wolves has made her entry into the game. And she will face Burko. First pitch is high, 1-0. Second pitch outside, 2-0. Now Iago is walk pro, so. Third pitch inside, 3-0. So she loses a lot of accuracy when she gets to a three-ball count. Ball low. Four pitch walk to Burko. Case in point. But if she gets the two strikes first, she she gets a lot of strikeouts. Now Nora Holmes up. Holmes ready. First pitch. Inside ball one. 
Five consecutive balls out of the bullpen. That catches the corner, one and one. Ball high, two and one the count now as Holmes waits patiently. Fourth pitch, line softly to center field. It'll hang up enough though for Sampson as he makes the catch for the second out. Runners have to retreat. And that'll bring up Randy Mann who hit a home run at the beginning of the inning. Randy looks at one outside for ball one. Ball high, 2-0 oh now. Dan ahead. Oh, I moved on, in, on instinct, 2-1. and one. That's ripped hard on the ground to second. Duffers will field it, fires the first for the third out. Hot corners do, however, scratch across five more runs, making it the sixth consecutive inning we've scored as they improve the lead 19-5. Top eight we go, Axelson, Sampson, and Park to face Hayes. First pitch heater, looked at for a strike, 0-1. Oh Curve ball, called a ball. Slider at the knees, 1-2. and two. Change up, pulled foul, 1-2. and two. Heater outside, 2-2 two two the count now. Slider fouled off, still 2-2. Two two. Curve ball, sky to shallow left center field, going out as Holmes, still going out, still going out. Makes the catch for the first out. She almost overran it. Samson up now, one for three today. Has a double to his name. Nothing much else. First pitch called a strike inside corner, 0 and 1. Curveball called a strike at the knees, 0 and 2. Change up below the knees, ball one. Heater high, 2 and 2 the count now. Curveball ripped up the middle, dumps, dives to his left, cuts it off, fires the first, not in time. Samson beats it out with his great speed. Another infield hit for the Sandcats. Had to bring up Rodney Park. Go for two with a walk and an RBI on a ground out. First pitch called a strike on the outside corner, 0-1. Hayes gets ahead. Second pitch is hit in up the middle. It's another base hit. First and second now with only one out. They anticipated it. Now Duffer's up. First pitch low, 1-0. Peter called a strike, 1-1. One one. Third pitch fouled off, out of play in the first base side, 1-2. Third ball, grounded back to the mound. Hayes the second one, on to first, double play, 1-4-3 as he gets out of a jam. Bottom eight we go, 19-5 remains the score. Stadcleaf up, four for four, four singles to his name, and two RBIs to boot. Yago's first pitch is outside for ball one. That's ripped up the middle. She left it right there for him. Stadcleaf is five for five. Five singles for the backup catcher. That'll bring up Sox. Two for four with two singles today. He also has two RBIs as well. First pitch on the inside corner called a strike, going one. Rip down the left field line. That's going to be out of play. 0-2. Just foul. Good rip, though. That's going to be skied softly to left. Going in is Stake. Makes the catch on the slide. Good effort from Stake as he makes the first out. Now to bring up James. Two for five. Triple and a single. Also is an RBI. Strike on the inside corner on the curveball. 0-1. Good pitch from Yago. That's rip. Just Foul, a little early on the curveball. 0-2 the count now. Slides softly to the left side. Off of Park's diving glove. It's going to ricochet to the outfield. Stackleaf going for three. Will be thrown out still, but James to second. On the play, it's a double. Now to bring up Ice Vayner, the closer. He's coming in. He's the last reliever in the Sandcats bullpen, so they just had to make a move at this point. Yago's out of stamina. Vayner is also new to the series. He's also one of the most dominant closers I think I've seen in this game. He's composed. 25 accuracy increase when a three ball count. Alive facing him. First pitch ripped into the right center gap. He left that slider right there for him to smash. And smash he does as Alive drives it into the gap. He's in with a double. Runner James will score and it's 22-5. Hot corners. Now Jeff jumps up. Four RBIs, two solo homers, two doubles. For two singles. First pitch skied the left. Stike going back a few steps, calling for it now. Makes the catch. Three outs. Sandcat, hot corners, put another run on the board. 
and it's 20 to 5. Top nine we go. Hayes will start the inning here against Kawaguchi. First pitch fastball, sky to center. James in a few steps, calls for it. Makes the play for the first out. That'll bring up Oxen Soxen. Slider outside and not handled by Stagley back there. Next one is inside on the corner this time, one and one. Heater ripped to left. Center, alive is going to be over, but he's not going to get there. James will switch over to catch it. It's all the way to the walls. Oxen Soxen in with the double despite stubbing his toe. That injury is not affecting him in the least. Now Marsha Brown up. He curveball just outside, 1-0. Peter on the inside corner, 1-1. One one. Change up, pulled foul, 1-2 and two the count, sorry. Slider ripped off of Hayes' glove. Throws the third to keep the runner honest, and the runner will score on a make, reach base on the infield hit. I believe it's an infield hit. It could be a fielder's choice, not sure. Here's Stake. First pitch hit the short. Hale Helms to field, two outs as the runner retreats. First and second with two outs for Bentley. 0 for 4 today. Ball is by Stagleaf as the runners will advance to third and second. Although it is called a strike, so 0 and 1 the count. Second pitch ripped the right. Sox back on it. Makes the play for the third and final out. Hot corners win 22-5 against the Sandcats. 29 hits for the Hot Corners along with one error made in the game. I believe, I don't know if they gave that to Hayes or not. I'll have to check. Sandcats do manage 11 hits but only get 5 runs for their troubles. On their side, Bentley went 0 for 5 and Duffers went 0 for 3. Though he did manage to draw a walk and get on base. Bentley did not get on base and he struck out once. On the Hot Corners side, everybody recorded at least 2 hits. So it was a good good day all around for us. The only home run on the Sandcats side came from Kawaguchi. On our side, we had one from Alive, two from Jeb Jumps, one from Bobby Bash, and one from Randy Mann, the majority of which were solo shots. Kerwin Arches takes the loss after five innings of 13 runs. You heard me right, 13 runs. McMahon goes two-thirds of an inning, gets a liner to the face for his trouble, gives up a run. Morris gives up five earned runs in two-thirds of an inning. Yago goes one and a third, gives up a run. And Vayner has a clean inning, a third of an inning. Cooper goes six and two-thirds, gives up the five earned runs. And Hayes goes two and a third innings, only giving up three hits. So good effort all around from the team. Alive is your player of the game, going five for six with a home run and three doubles, a single, and six RBIs. Jeb jumps, and that actually ties the team record again, six RBIs. Jeb jumps, four for six, two home runs and four RBIs. This is a close runner-up. And then Randy Mann, two for five with a homer and a double. Three RBIs to his name as well. All in all, great performance for us. It was a shellacking, but we do stay undefeated. We're now 5-0. and oh. And it looks like we might be in control of our destiny here as we're almost half, we're getting, approaching the halfway point of the season. We're right now in the second, second quarter of it, so... We'll see if we can keep it up. Let's send these Lex 11 computer games and take a breakdown look at the divisions. Mm -hmm. Thurloins beat the Saw Teeth. Wild Pigs beat the Blowfish. Good bounce back for them. Heaters come back to beat the Platypi. Wild Oats beat the Bee Wolves. Herbosaurs lose again. Crocodons beat the Overdogs. Jacks crush the Grapplers. Sirloins beat the Saw Teeth again. Wild Pigs beat the Moon Stars and Extras 5 to 4. Nemesis come back, beat the Platypi 2 to 1. And Sandcats win despite having a depleted bullpen over the Moose 3 to 2. So in the Super Conference, the Beast Division, Hot Corners lead 5 and 0. Oh. Freebooters and Wild Pigs each at 4 and 2. Moose 3 and 3, and the Herbosaurs winless at 0 oh and 6. In the boss division, Sandcats sit at four and two, Blowfish at three and two, Moonstars three and three, Sirloins two and four, and the Salty one and five, but they do manage to get a win. Look at that. Actually, they didn't. In this simulation, they got two. They must have gotten the win last time. 
And then Mega Conference, the Heaters, 4-2. and two. Platypi lose two. They're down four and two. They're tied for first now. Wide loads are three and two. Right behind them, Grapplers three and three, and Beebles two and four. And in the Monster Division, Crocodons lose once, but they're five and one, still leading their division. Jackson Nemesis tied at three and three apiece. Overdogs two and four, and the Buzzards also winless at zero oh and five. The next game we will be on the road for the first time this season, as we will be traveling to take on. Buck Wings old team, the Blowfish. This is a revenge game for our manager. Can his rookie pitcher, Noah Kaiser, lead him to the sixth consecutive victory to start Hot Corners franchise history? We'll have to tune in to find out, but let's check. Uh, new development for Bobby Bash. That's an opportunity. Uh, Geronimo James loses a few pounds after food poisoning. Improves his speed. Makes him even faster. Wow, that's awesome. And the other training opportunities for Geronimo James. Now, that's an interesting one. We might get that because, well, this is Geronimo James. This is one of our star outfielders. No signings. So no one has made a move in free agency. No first blood there. All right. Let's go to the development screen. So we have a choice to make. We can either do the mechanics tune-up for Rhubarb. We could do the Sluggerade for Bobby Bash. We could do the Juicing Program for Nori Miyoshi. Or we could do the Just for Bros for Geronimo Jones. James. Why do I keep calling him Jones? I don't know. Now, honestly, let, let's think about this here. We got a really young outfielder. We got our moderately, our, probably one of our youngest starters. We have an aging infielder. Bobby Bash is actually 37. Holy crap, I thought he was 35. And we have our outfielder, our backup outfielder, who is modest at best. She's not going to get much better. I don't see the point in giving her power because, well, she's the backup. It's not going to really improve her game. Her game is all about defense. Bobby Bash is old. He might retire at the end of the season, so upgrading him, probably not the smartest idea, especially since it's for power doesn't really need it he already has like the highest power rating on the team so that brings me to rhubarb which will expire at the end of this one or james you know what this is a no-brainer for me we're gonna do the james goes up two power and gets only the one speed increase okay does he get the utility though no Okay, so all three lower rolls happen there, but we improve one of our better young players, and he just gets a tiny bit better. Let's see. Mix just for bros into their shampoo. Now, what good is that going to do the man? He has no hair. <laughs> I like Smithy. I like these guys had fun with this. I like it. McDonald's down under 24 mil. Let's see if anyone signs him. Moss is down to 15 and a half. I'm tempted to sign Schwartz, but Lars Stagleaf is making it difficult for me to do that because Stagleaf just had his best game ever. Five for five with five singles. That's a great scoreline, no matter how you squeeze it. And of course, Schnitzel Stone here, 8.3 million. Still a little rich for my blood. I don't want to lose any money. Jason Odom's at 5.7. That's actually a little bit more reasonable, but not quite. And in the pitchers, mm. yeah, these starters, they're still really expensive. And Peralta's down to 7.9 now, so he's only 2 million over Jones. We'll think about it, but no need to make a move yet, guys. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you in the next episode. Leave a like down below and let me know what you think. Who's your favorite player? What did you like best about the gameplay? What can I do to make it better? Let me know, guys. Just... Thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you in the next episode of the Hot Corners Dynasty here on YouTube. Thank you so much. This is the Nasty One, signing off.